case in their first office. If I don't use it, I'll run up with mine. Like priceless type deal? You know, like prototypes? You know, like we got your guys' office, like you get a little prototype thing going on. And, and yeah. We get to ha actually have prototype smelly guy and three original fragrances. Our two women scents that never made it on the market. Okay. At least this one smells good. Scary. Smelly guys on our off day. We're not really an off day. This is the only day we get to actually work. It seems like our off days is when we actually do the work. Hey, our off day is not even our off day. Man. You know? I don't even know how this looks. I'm just kind of like pointing it at me. That different angle. Totally missing your Good. Side. There's a completely missing thing. There you go. I think we need to see you. Not unless we get employees. What do you think? That's a good idea. What did I say? Yeah, you don't know. You just, you just, sounds like a good idea. Sounds like a good idea. So, Mr. Brian, how does it feel? You're now official smelly guy business owner. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much just went and seen one of our lawyers. And pretty cool. Uh, yeah, we just now made Smelly Guys 110% official. 110% legalized. So, as of today, Smelly Guys is officially a business. Uh, just taking the steps to get this thing going. I um, found out what it takes today to actually get trademarked. Remember what I was talking earlier about trademarking your product and your business name and things like that. I um, kind of found out what we need to do and what we really need to focus on. Um, for us, it's going to be more along the lines of getting the product trademarked. We 
before anything else, just for the simple fact that that's what needs to be protected the most at this at this stage of the game, at this stage of the start of our business, um, with us being a goods provider, you know, we obviously need to protect our goods first. Uh, so that being said, we're gonna we're gonna get our product trademarked. Ultimately, guys, if you plan on having multiple products or multiple names for these products or whatever, plan on being able to raise money for multiple trademarks. You know, uh, if you're gonna go after an investor, plan on making sure that you put that in your business proposal to that investor as that, you know, obviously that's gonna need to be covered for you to be good, sound, and legit. Uh, so I'm pretty excited, you know, got some great news today. You know, my company's now official. So now we're, instead of crawling, we're gonna start taking baby steps to getting ourselves off the ground. So, uh, yeah, that's it. All right, uh, I'm driving into work right now. It's about uh, 1.45. I have to be at work about 2.30. That's the thing, you know, when you first start off with a business, it doesn't mean that you can uh, just quit your job or I still have to go to work like everybody else right now. You know, the whole idea of a business, you basically have to nurture your business at the beginning. You have to take care of it. You have to, you have to help it grow, keep, keep it protected. And, and then once it gets to a certain point, your business can start taking care of you. You know, this is the beginning stages of uh, Smelly Guys. We, I have, I can't, Smelly Guys can't take care of me. I have to take care of Smelly Guys. I have to nurture it. I still have, you know, I still have bills to pay. I still have financial obligations I have to meet. So I'm still going to work. I work at a uh, psychiatric hospital five days a week, you know, eight, eight hours a day. Making my 40 hours, get my, you know, get my paycheck. But see, that's just the thing. You know, most people, they say, oh, well, you know, we're living paycheck to paycheck. Well, I wish I could live paycheck to paycheck. I wish I was even living paycheck to paycheck. Honestly, I, I can't even make it to my next paycheck. Something always comes up. Either, you know, I need more gas, um, I gotta go groceries, somebody's borrowing money, you know, I basically, I live from borrowed money to borrowed money. I'm trying to do something bigger, something better, I'm trying to better myself by starting smelly guys. One of the things Frank really opened my eyes to is, well, what are you going to school for? You know, you could always just go to school to be a nurse. Be a nurse like like some of the nurses at my job, you know, some of the RNs, you know, you can make ten dollars an hour more. I, you know, I, well, I want to do psychology because I want to do research. He said, "Do you really think that just getting another job is going to really do it for you?" I said, "Well, what do you mean?" He's, he said, "Well." You're living paycheck to paycheck. You don't like that, right? And I said, of course I don't like that. He said, well, go ask the RNs around here. Go talk to nurses. Ask them, do they still live paycheck to paycheck? Surprising, surprisingly, they do. Uh, the, the RNs, they live paycheck to paycheck. Just like, you know, everybody else. They're, they, yet they, they make more an hour, so they have nicer stuff, but they're still paycheck to paycheck. Um, what shocked me the most is actually talking with a medical doctor who makes a six-figure salary. Yes, she has nicer stuff, but she still lives paycheck to paycheck. It, she can't really afford to go a whole two weeks without a paycheck. She, it would, it would, 
it would hurt her very bad. It would take her a long time to catch back up. You know, just like everybody else. It, that's what kind of, that kind of got me not looking at college. Not to say college is bad. It, if that's what you want to do, that, then do it. It just opened my eyes to more possibilities than just going to college to make ends meet. So that's what got me, uh, that's what really got me motivated to start a business. And even though that my first business didn't do as well that, as I hoped, this Smelly Guys business, I mean, I learned a lot. And this Smelly Guys business, it's gonna be the game changer for me. It is definitely, One of the things Frank taught me is, you know, Jacob, to be, to, to reach the American dream, to reach financial, to reach financial uh, freedom, it, the method's easy. It's easy to know, it takes a little bit more to apply, but basically, you know, he says, you gotta have assets. If you have assets, then then you're good. As long as your assets outweigh your liabilities. I said, uh, so liability, I'm guessing, is money going out. And assets is money coming in. He said something like that. Um, he said, name me an asset that you have. And I said, well, uh, well, I have a, uh, I have a house and I have a car. He said, oh, you do. Yes. Yes, I have a house and I have a car. I said, oh, okay. Um, can you rent those out to people? I said, uh, no. Um, I live in my house and I drive my car. I don't rent it out. I said, so you put money into it, right? I said, yeah. Well, does it make you money? Uh, no, not, not really. I said, it's not an asset. An asset only makes you money. Liability takes your money. So, you have any assets? No, not, not really. Not when you put it that way. Uh, no? I said, well, there's your problem. So, to get assets, you know, it might... Might need, might, might need to buy some assets. That's that's one way to get them. So buy things that, that make you money. So yeah, then buy things that make you money. You have assets. So I said, oh, you know that sounds great. That's well, that's that's easy. Except when you have no money. So it's not gonna work for me. Well, that's when he turned around and said, well, then you have to do Plan B. What's plan B? You can't buy an asset, you have to create an asset. So create an asset. Say so yes. If you cannot buy an asset, you have to then create an asset. So okay, okay. Uh, you mean like start a business or something? He so said, you know what? Why not? Yeah. Why not? That's one way of doing it. That's that's pretty much uh, the idea. The business should be an asset. That's what I'm. That's what we're creating. The smelly guys. But you know, I started laughing. I told Frank, I said, "Well, isn't going to work an asset?" He said, uh, "Yes and no." So what do you mean, yes or no? He said, well, here's the thing. You make, yes, you go to work and you make money. A true asset is something that makes you money without you necessarily being there. So that got me thinking. So I need, you know, so my job isn't really an asset because unless I'm there, I don't make money. But okay, okay, uh, so if I do a business, 
I need to look at a way to create the business so I, I eventually don't have to be there and it makes me money. He said, exactly. Find a way to create a business and that business will be an asset as long as you can create it. Once it's done, you don't have to be there. Don't get stuck where you have to be there every day because then it's, it's no different than a job. I said, you know, so being self-employed basically is not an asset. I said, not nah, really. It's, it's right there on the line, but it's still not an asset. Once you can take you out of the equation and then it makes you money, then it is an asset.